Hello, and welcome to this Poly Studies tutorial. Well, we're coming to the end of our look at pronouns in the Pali language. And in this tutorial, we'll be looking at indefinite pronouns. So to recap briefly, pronouns are used in the position of substantive nouns. And indefinite pronouns refer to people, places or things without actually saying who or what they are. They are non-specific or indefinite. In English, they can be made by placing the words any, some, every or no as prefixes to the words body, one and thing. So we get anybody, anyone, anything or somebody someone, something, everybody, everyone, everything, or nobody, no one, and no thing. Now these are all slightly different in meaning, but we can see that their antecedent, that is the thing that they refer to, is general and non-specific. There are other indefinite words in English, like few, many, several, all, most, some, but what I intend is to use this diagram just to show the similarities between English and the Pali language. Now in Pali, the indefinite pronoun is made from a combination of interrogative pronoun plus the particle C. And, according to Alan Bomhard's Grammar of the Pali Language, there are one of three particles that can be used to make an indefinite pronoun, and that is chi, pi, or chana. But by far the most common is the particle chi, and as they are all synonymous, we will use chi in the rest of our tutorial. So, the interrogative pronoun is based on the stem ka, and if the particle si follows an interrogative pronoun, that makes it indefinite. In practice though, the particle chi is nearly always joined with the pronoun itself. So we get ko chi, kin chi, ka chi. The important thing to understand here is that the interrogative pronoun declines according to the function that it's playing in the sentence. And the particle chi is added to the end of that and is itself indeclinable. So let's remind ourselves at how the interrogative pronoun declines. If you remember, pronouns can represent substantive nouns, in which case they will stand alone and take the gender and number of the thing that they represent, which is the antecedent. Or they can act as pronominal adjectives, in which case they will qualify another noun and take the same gender, case, and number as the noun that they qualify. And this is still true when the thing that they represent is indefinite. So we can tell that the pronoun is indefinite because it always ends with the particle chi. And in English we can render this with the indefinite pronouns someone, something, anyone or anything depending on what best fits the context. And it will be of no surprise that we can also add the indefinite particle chi to interrogative adverbs as well. And so we can make the terms somewhere, somehow or sometime. And being adverbs, they are indeclinable. Now the keen-eyed among you may have spotted that pronouns that end with the pure nasal sound, ng, which is called nigahita or anaswara, when the particle chi is added, changes to a palatal nya sound to make the word kinchi. Also, another peculiarity in Pali is that if the particle chi is followed by a word beginning with a vowel, chi becomes chid. 
In practice, this only happens in compound words. That's when words become joined through usage. And so we get terms such as kurchidiva. It's important in these cases to distinguish that the D belongs to the indefinite pronoun and isn't part of the word diva. Well, let's move on now to look at some examples. Sa chenang kochi kinchi aha. Word for word, this translates if, him, anyone, anything, he said. Now, verbs which are about telling and saying often take two objects in the accusative. So we can see that kochi being in the nominative case is the subject and nang and kinchi are both accusative and will form the objects of the verb. So from this we can work out the sentence as if anyone has said anything to him. Na ati kinchi eta. Word for word this means there is not anything here. Or in simpler English, there's nothing here. Actually, indefinite pronouns are often used in negative sentences. So let's have a look at some more. Naati kursi bavo nicho. There is not anything, being or state of existence, permanent. Here we can see that there are three words, all in the nominative case and so two are likely to be adjectives qualifying a third. And so the indefinite pronoun is actually just adding an indefinite sense to the noun bavo. So we can render this, there is not any permanent state of existence. Na kasachi kinchi dareti. This reads, not anyone which will be in dative or genitive, anything, and he owes. Now the dative case can be used for the indirect object, that is somebody who receives something, and in this case that means receiving a debt, or because the sentence is negative, not receiving a debt. So we can render this, he owes nothing to anyone. From these few examples, we can see that when a sentence includes the negative particle na and also an indefinite pronoun, the pronoun itself may become no one or no thing, depending on the context. Now, if an indefinite pronoun is immediately preceded by a relative pronoun, that is, a pronoun with the stem ya, the indefinite pronoun takes on a slightly different meaning and that is one of whoever. We'll cover relative pronouns in another video, but for now, just know that they mean who, what or which. And so when they combine with an indefinite pronoun, we get whoever, whatever or whichever. So for instance, ya, kashi, vedana, word for word is what, any, sensation. And we can see that both ya and kachi are feminine because vedana is also feminine and so the pronouns are qualifying it making whatever sensation yang kinchi whatever thing here the pronouns combine to mean anything whatsoever another way of creating the indefinite whoever is to repeat the relative pronoun twice. So if you see the term yo-yo, that's equivalent of yokochi, whoever. And yang-yang is equivalent to yang-kinchi, whatever. This is actually an example of a general rule in Pali, and that is repeating any term can intensify that term, in a sense giving it the meaning very much so. And when a pronoun is repeated, it means that they express a broader, more general meaning, which in practice makes them indefinite. So hopefully, indefinite terms in Pali don't present us with many problems. 
we've seen that indefinite pronouns, like someone or something in English, are created in Pali by combining the interrogative pronoun, which is declined, with the particle chi. And this is true too if the interrogative term is an adverb. Also, if the negative particle na is present in a sentence with an indefinite term, it can take the meaning of no one or no thing. Also, the indefinite meaning whoever, whatever or whichever in English can be created in Pali by combining the relative pronoun on the stem ya with an indefinite pronoun. And this has the same meaning as if the relative pronoun was repeated twice because repetition of terms in Pali can give them a generalised or non-specific meaning. Finally, like any pronoun in Pali, indefinite pronouns can either stand alone, representing a substantive, or they can act as a pronominal adjective and qualify another noun. Well, I hope that brief look at indefinite pronouns is a help, and for more information, please visit my website.